بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه ما بعد This is our 15th lesson going through the book نخبط وفكر في مصطلح أهل الأثر للحافظ بن حجر رحمه الله تعالى ويشتطر السيمن رضي الله رحمه الله ثم البدعة إما بمكفر أو بمفسق فالأول لا يقبل أو لا يقبل صاحبها الجمهور والثاني يقبل من لم يكن داعية في الصح إلا أن يروي ما يقوي بدعته في رد على المختار وبه صرح الجوزجاني شيخ النسائي And so another reason why a person's narrations can be rejected is that he's a mubtada He is deemed an, an innovator So the innovators And back in those days the innovators were the likes of the Mu'tazila Right? And the, these are the sects, right? The deviated sects from the path of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah For example the Rawafid, the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiya and so on the Nawasib, the Khawarij, right? These were the uh, main groups who had deviated away from the path of Ahlul Sunnah and deviated from the path of the Salaf al-Salih and the Sahab of Allah alayhim. And so they fell into Bid'ah. And so the ones who followed them fell into Bid'ah. And this Bid'ah, this innovation, and we can speak about its definition and its intricacies in another lesson, bi'ibnillahi ta'ala, that this is not the point. Defining what Bid'ah is and what makes a person a or not, that's not, the, that's not, this is not the place for that. Rather, here is to understand that the bid'ah, according to the mustalah, uh, according to Al Mustalah al Hadith, is that the bid'ah is of two types. Either a bid'ah that renders a person a kafir, so the person falls into a bid'ah that renders him a disbeliever, or a bid'ah that is mufasiq, a bid'ah that makes a person a fasiq. When it comes to the first one, bid'ah mukaffira, then according to the vast majority of Ahl Hadith, according to the vast majority of the scholars of Hadith, then his narrations are not accepted. Because he's a kafir, right? The bid'ah that is mukaffira, the person's falling into an act of kufr, right? And so how can you take the narration of the person who's fallen into disbelief? Rather, this denigrates the person's what? Adala. And so we say the person who is a, a mubtadi' and the mubtadi' or the bid'ah that is fallen into is a bid'ah mukaffira, then this person's narrations are rejected and they're not accepted. As for the bid'ah mufassiqa, then there is more tafsir. This person's a hadith a person who is a mubtadi' falls, falls into a bid'ah which is mufassiqa then his bid'ah then his uh, hadith can be accepted upon conditions being met and the author Ibn Hajar rahimahullah mentioned these conditions the first being man lam yakun da'atan fil asah that this person must not be a caller to his bid'ah he must not be a caller to his to his bid'ah so if the person مثلاً, is a nasibi yubghidu aliyan wa uthman a person who despises and makes takfir upon Ali and Uthman and so on. طيب. And uh, he falls into Nasb. Nasb Ali and Ali al-Bayt. He hates Ali and Ali al-Bayt. مثلا. طيب. Uh, and of course if he makes takfir upon them and he makes istihlal of their blood then he's a kafir, right? And so he'll, he'll fall into bid'ah mukaffira. But let's, let's say somebody who's not at that level. He has a Nasb. But he's not at that level. Lam, he's, he's not fallen into kufr. So his bid'ah is what? Fisq. Because the one who hates Ali is a fasiq. Right? The one who hates Ali and Abi Talib is a fasiq. And so, this person, if he doesn't call to his bid'ah, if he doesn't call people to, to follow him in his nasb, then that's the first condition. The second condition is that the hadith that you're narrating must not be a narration that what? That strengthens your bid'ah. It must not be a narration that does what? That strengthens your bid'ah. For example, you narrate a hadith that mentions a uh, a bad thing against Ali and Abi Talib. You mention that you narrate a hadith or you relay a hadith that uh, denigrates the status of Ali and Abi Talib. In this case, we say this narration is not accepted. Why? Because it calls and it helps and it supports and it aids your, your bid'ah, your innovation. And so, uh, the person who falls into bid'ah, which is a mufassiqa bid'ah, then we say, upon meeting these two conditions, i.e. you're not a caller to your bid'ah, and number two, you don't narrate a hadith that strengthens your bid'ah, and you meet the other conditions, of course, that you have to be a adil a, a and a dhabit and so on, then your hadith might be accepted. And that's why you find, مثلاً, in Sahih al-Bukhari, the narration of Imran ibn Hittan, مثلاً, Imran ibn Hittan was one of the nawasib, from the khawarij, right? Who hated Ali and so on. However, his narration is mentioned, you find his name in Sahih Bukhari, 
and there is narrations from him, Imran ibn Hittan. طيب. And likewise, you might find in other books of hadith, authentic hadith, in which the reporters, or one reporter in hadith is from the, he's been, he's been accused of uh, being from the Qadariya, مثلا, or he's accused of being from the, uh, of having the aqeedah of, of, of Al-Jahmiyyah, مثلا. طيب. But his narration is accepted. Why? Because he, he, meet the, he met the conditions of Adan and Dabt, he wasn't a quarter to bid'ah, and then the report he's narrating doesn't impact or doesn't it has got nothing to do with the bid'ah that he has, or, or the uh, deviant creed that he holds. That is an in, an, an innovation. طيب. So that's the bid'ah, and of course the bid'ah returns back to the adala. It, it denigrates a person's adala. As for the last one, ثم سؤال حفظي. سؤال حفظي returns back to the dabt, so it affects a person's dabt. سؤال حفظي means a person has bad memory. Bad memory. And we spoke about it in a previous lesson. That it's not like فحش الغلط. فحش الغلط is the person who has 70% errors, 30% correct. He has far more errors than he has corrections. As for the one who's سوء الحفظ, he's 50-50. He's hit and miss. طيب. He can hit one time and miss the other time. Hit another time, miss the other time. Right? So he makes the same mistakes and he does the same corrections. Or there is slightly more corrections, but there's a high percentage of mistakes. 60-40. 59, 41, and so on, or and the other way. طيب. That's what Su'il Hifd means. If this Su'il Hifd, as the author Rahimahullah said, ثم Su'il Hifd, إن كان لازما فهو الشاذ وعلى رأين أو طارئا فالمختلط. So this Su'il Hifd, this bad memory, can either be a sifa which is intrinsic in the person throughout his life. So he's always been known to be Su'il Hifd, to be bad, Su'il Hifd, to be bad in memory. Then his narrations, they're called what? Shadha. They're called shadha, as we spoke about in the, in the, uh, in the previous, in, in, in a previous lesson. We spoke about al mahfud and al shad right? We said that if you have two thiqah narrators, and one narrator is stronger in memory than the other, then we call the, and these two narrations go against each other. We said the narration of the stronger narrator is mahfud and the weaker narrator is called shad And generally, when we talk about thiqat, narrations that are or narrators that are both reliable, the difference between the two is in the reliability in their memory, right? And so if one has less memory than the other, and they both go against each other, the one with more memory is given the precedence, and he's given the hadith which is mahfuz, and the one with less memory, the weaker memory, is given the shad. And so if a person has weaker memory than the person who's more stronger than him, so he has weaker memory, he has... Let's give examples, it's better to give examples, let's say X and Y. X is stronger than Y in memory. X narrates a hadith, Y narrates a hadith, they are opposing hadith, X is mahfuz, Y is shad. Why is the hadith of Y shad? Because he has weaker memory relative to X, he's sayyid al Relative to X, he say al طيب. And of course, when this Y narrator is weak, when the Y narrator is weak, طيب, uh, and he goes against X, who is a reliable narrator, then we call the hadith of X ma'roof and the hadith of Y munkar. There could be a case where the person who had good memory, and then towards the end of his life, he became senile. Or towards the end of his life, he... Uh, started to gain or started to make errors before he never used to make errors before he used to be a, a top tier narrator but as he aged as he got older the memory started to decline and so the mistakes started to increase and so we say this person is muhtalat he's now mixed up his narrations he's reached an age of senileness if that's even a word طيب. he's become senile he's become a person whose memory has declined to an extent where he's now deemed Satan. he's got bad memory now because of age, or because مثلا, he had a, an accident, and he, he fell into a coma, مثلا. and he woke up from the coma, and he was never the same again. For example, then we say this person's hadith is what muhtarat, or this person is a muhtarat narrator. So we say before you became muhtarat, your hadith are okay, but afterwards, your memory is compromised, and so you're now considered what muhtarat. Then the author, he said, وَمَتَى تُبِعَ السَّيِّئُ الْحِفْظِ بِمُعْتَبَرٍ وَكَذَا الْمَسْتُورُ وَالْمُرْسَلُ وَالْمُدَلِّسِ صَارَ حَدِيثٌ حَسَنًا لَا لِذَاتِهِ بَلْ بِالْمَجْمُوعِ And so he speaks about, remember we mentioned the ahadith, it can be صحيح لذاته, صحيح لغيره, حسن لذاته, حسن لغيره, ضعيف. The asal is that the hadith of the one who is say al-hidh, the hadith of the one who is mastur, the hadith of the one that is mursal, or the mursal hadith, the hadith of the mudallis, the asal is that they're all weak, they're all fall under, ضعف. However, if you find a chain of narration that has these four problems and you have another chain of narration that supports the chain of narration, 
which may not have that problem, or you have another, or you have a number of different ahadith, or a number of different chain narrations, I should say, that all have yani, small problems like this, they can all be brought together, طيب, and uh, by combining these different chains, because these uh, weaknesses are weaknesses that are very very fair they're not harsh weaknesses they're not severe weakness they're a light form of weakness these four that he mentioned Mudellis, Mursal, Mastur and Sayyid al these four cases so if you have a number of chain of narrations for one hadith or you have a hadith which have which has many shawahid to it it may strengthen it from being by itself da'if to hasan li ghayri or it was hasan li, that, li ghayri and it became strength to hasan li dhati or it was hasan li dhati and it became strengthened to Sahih li, li ghayni طيب. So that's what the author رحمه الله تعالى mentions uh, with regards to the statement of the author وَمَتَى تُوبِعَ السَّيْءُ الْحِفْظِ بِمُعْتَبَرٍ وَكَذَا الْمَسْتُورُ وَالْمُرْسَلُ وَالْمُدَلِّسُ صَارَ حَدِيثٌ حَسَنًا لَا لِذَاتِهِ بَلْ بِالْمَجْمُوعُ And so he's highlighting the concept of Hassan li ghayri By itself is ضعيف but combining it together can make the hadith Hassan li ghayri And of course here this is a mas'ala where the ulama رحمه الله تعالى have a lot of back and forth regards to it. There's a lot of back and forth. And maybe as we go along in our studies, we might come across it and tackle it there and then. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Mustafi bi'idhnillah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu wa la ilahi illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.